-hmm. when you're living by the hormones of stress, not a time to create. No. Not a time to open your heart. Not a time to learn. Sometimes we do a meditation, we start opening our heart, we start elevating the body's energy, and then those emotions can drive certain thoughts of your future. You have to understand that if 95% of who you are is a set of unconscious programs, mm. then the first step is lighting a match in a dark place. This will be one of the most powerful videos you watch today. Right now, you're about to discover the three secrets to unlock the power of your mind with Dr. Joe Dispenza. I hope you enjoy. How do we change our energy and how do we sustain it for an extended period of time? How long does that time need to be until we really start to see? The Sometimes immediate. Okay, so, so our research, and we've done uh, in the last six years, uh, because we were seeing so many incredible incredible things going on in our workshops. I mean, people stepping out of wheelchairs and all kinds of crazy things. You're like I, a church. We're kind of like, like well, a church, like it, a mega church, yeah. <laughs> but hopefully not that. But, Based in science. Yeah, but, but, but. But I, isn't it amazing that some of these churches, when get, people get to believe, whether they have science backing it or not, they just, it's the belief in the they mind. They step out into the unknown. You step out of your yeah. body yeah. And, and heal yourself, Ex right? Instantaneously instantaneously. And we do see that a lot. And some people are like, ah, oh, that's, how yeah. can that be possible? Well, how can it be possible? Well, look, we've, we've, we've I done has, the research now. I've back assembled it. a team yeah. of scientists. We've yeah. done 8,500 brain scans. I can tell you, I can tell you when a person's about ready to change. I can tell you why people really? don't change. I can tell you what it takes to change. So what's it take to change? Well, do you change? Most people keep their attention always their awareness on their body. They keep their attention on everything in their environment, <clears throat> people and things. Their, their brain is always scanning everything around us to determine what's known and unknown, what's, what's safe, safe and, and unsafe, yeah. right? And, you know, we do that all the time. So our research shows that the moment you take your attention off your body and you go from somebody to nobody, you take your attention off the people in your life and go from who you identify with from someone to no one. And so mm -hmm. many people spend their whole life building an identity of being someone. Take your attention off your cell phone, your computer, your car, and go from something to nothing. Take your attention off where you're sitting, where you need to be, some place you have to go, go from somewhere to nowhere. And take your attention off time, linear, thinking about the predictable future or the familiar past, and fall into the generous present moment and go from some time to no time. Then all you're left with is consciousness. Mm -hmm. And that's the moment you're no longer playing by the same rules of matter to matter. And there's an, a, a very elegant moment that takes place in the brain. In fact, I was just showing my research to a group of researchers in uh, Santa Cruz this past week, and they were blown away. And I said, now watch, this person, this person's going to have a transformational moment. They said, how do you know? I go, I, I've seen enough of these. And the next moment, the whole brain just lights up. That person is switched on. They, they'll never be the same person again. They're having a transcendental moment. And we could actually predict it and teach it now. It's a formula. Mm. Just like you doing sports, it just becomes a formula. Sure. And then you change the formula and you add to it, right? So when you no longer are you know, identifying with your body, your environment, and time, that's the moment your pure consciousness. Now, you're just an idea. You're an awareness. Awareness. Awareness that has nothing to do with local space and time. And now, if you're you no longer. You can go beyond you can anything. Go, you can go beyond, and that's when the brain, because the brain doesn't change the brain. It takes a long time. It takes a long time for the personality to change the personality, for the ego to change the ego. The programs to change the programs takes forever. Matter takes a long time to change matter. But when you're in this moment, you're no longer playing by those rules. Consciousness is the phenomenon above matter. In fact, consciousness is beginning to activate or manipulate circuits in the brain. People just think the brain is creating consciousness. No, consciousness is executing the brain, right? So then, if the brain can change, then the mind doesn't change the brain. Mind is the brain in action. It's consciousness that changes it. So when people begin to disengage and get beyond themselves, you are at your absolute best when you get beyond yourself. Then getting the person to that point. How does someone get to that point? Yeah, so we teach them that formula. We teach them to that point where all of a sudden they reach that generous present moment where they just feel connected. And when they're in that place, all the things they thought they wanted they actually no longer want because right. they feel like they already have them. 
So then imagine living your life from that place. You would be less uh, judgmental. Uh, and you would be less frustrated. Right. You would be less impatient. Less reactive, yeah. And so, so the formula then is that it requires a clear intention, which is a coherent brain. And when you're living stressed out and something goes wrong, and you're threatened, or you can't predict an outcome, or you have the perception that something's getting worse, or you can't control it, you switch on that fight or flight nervous system that yeah. we talked about. Yeah. Now, here's what happens. When that occurs, you start shifting your attention from one person to one problem, the one thing to another person to another place, because your brain is trying to predict the next moment. Well, every one of those people and things and places has this neurological network in your brain. So as you shift your attention from one to the next, it's like a lightning storm in the clouds. Your brain starts firing very incoherently. And when your brain is incoherent, you're incoherent. And when mm -hmm. you're living by the hormones of stress, not a time to create, no. not a time to open your heart, not a time to learn, not a time to trust. <laughs> and it's a time to run, fight, or hide. So people spend 70% of their time of their life living in the state. Wow. So think about it. So Miserable. Then, yeah, so then when you're under stress, if there's, a, if there's a cougar around the corner, you're not gonna sit down and meditate. You're not yeah, gonna sit yeah, still, you're gonna, you're right? But, but so jump imagine, on the tree. Yeah. Here you got the you got the survival gene switched on, and nobody is gonna believe in possibility when you're living in survival, right? Wow, yeah. So then, when you're living in stress, what happens is, is you narrow your focus on the cause. You narrow your focus on matter, the object, the thing, and so people get switched on, and all of their attention is on their outer world. When the hormones of stress kick on, your body gets an arousal, now your attention is on the body. And of course, when you're under stress, you're trying to predict the future based on the past. And now you're literally enslaved into three-dimensional reality. So then how do you get what you want? You gotta try harder, you gotta force it more, you gotta work harder, you gotta fight for it. It's matter trying to change matter. It's exhausting. And people just burn out, right? So then we now know that when you go from a narrow focus on something and you begin to open your focus, mm. you create a sense an awareness that the act of opening your focus causes you to stop thinking. And if you stop thinking, you no longer activate those circuits and you start to slow your brain waves down. Mm. And as you slow your brain waves down, you start connecting to that autonomic nervous system, the thing that's giving you life. And all of a sudden, when you get beyond yourself, it says, uh, he's gone, let's step in and just clean up this mess before he gets back. Really? And its job is to create order and balance. So your body will start to do that for you. The innate intelligence will step right in. Once you connect, you gotta connect. So you gotta know how to change your brain waves. You can't change your brain waves. Wow. You stay in that active state. You're basically moving furniture around. You're analyzing your life within some disturbing emotion. And I can tell you after looking at all those brain stands, if you're analyzing your life within some disturbing emotion, you're going to make your brain worse. Mm. In fact, you are thinking in the past, right? So you teach people the formula, how to open their focus, change their brain waves, connect to that invisible field, and all of a sudden different compartments of the brain start synchronizing. The front of the brain starts talking to the back of the brain, the right side starts talking to the left side, and all of a sudden, what sinks in the brain links in the brain, and all of a sudden you see this person starting to feel more like themselves, and when you see those two hemispheres mm. of the brain start lighting up, watch out, because wow. that person's gonna feel really whole. They're gonna start loving life, they're gonna feel like, they're gonna be in love with life because the union of polarity and duality is wholeness at the exact same time. Coherent brain, when you're resentful, when you're judgmental, when you're impatient, your heart beats out of rhythm. Why? You're stepping on the gas and you're stepping on the brake at wow. the same time. Your body and its intelligence living in survival is saying T-Rex is back there, but you're not running because you're sitting across the table looking at somebody smiling and your body's revved up, right? So the heart is beating arrhythmically. And when that happens, you're, you're squandering or you're using all the body's life force and turning it into chemistry, right? You're using so, all that energy to, to survive as opposed to think beyond. Right, right, so you're drawing from your vital life force, that invisible field around your body and you're turning it into chemistry. You actually are going to shrink your own field. The hormones of stress cause us to be materialists, right? We, 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 when we're under stress, we're, we're using our senses to determine reality. So now you feel more like matter and less like energy, more separate from possibility. So wow. then to teach a person then how to regulate that heart center. And we do this, uh, we've done 6,000 heart scans. Why? Because if I can teach you how to get in that heart state and I can teach you how to activate that center and I can teach you how to regulate an elevated emotion, Mm -hmm. The heart starts to create a very coherent signature. And when the heart starts beating like a drum, like dropping a pebble in water, 
it begins to produce a mm. measurable magnetic field up to three meters wide. Now you're more energy than matter, more wave than particle. Wow. Now, that field that's being created is measurable, and that's an energy, and energy is frequency, and all frequency carries information. So what is the information when it makes it here? But you're it sharing could, into the world. Yeah. It could carry the thought of your healing. Why? Because it's consistent with the energy. Guilt isn't going to carry the thought of your healing. It's a different frequency. And all of a sudden now, the person is elevating their emotional state and they're allowing their thought to be carried on that frequency. They're broadcasting a whole new energetic signature. But thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body. And how you think and how you feel creates your state of being. Mm. So then the question is, if you keep practicing creating that state of being, it should become familiar to you, yes or no? Yes. The word meditation literally means to become familiar with. Mm. So then if you're practicing moving into these elevated states and your heart is coherent and we're measuring and I can say, Lewis, you got it. Now do it for 30 minutes. Now mm. do it for 60 minutes. And you practice creating that coherence. You'll know when you're there and when you're not, yes or no? Sure. And then you would be able to say, like a skill, like anything else, give me a minute. I'm going to step out and you're going to go back in the heart coherence and bring up that state. So how now, do we get there in the heart? Oh, well, then we practice the formula. Again, rest your attention, start sure, calling sure. up elevated emotions. And when you start seeing that that starts happening, then you sustain it. Then you keep practicing. And all of a sudden, it gets longer and longer and longer. Now, what's the relevance behind that? Well, we've measured neurotransmitters. So when a person actually activates their heart, the heart releases a chemical called uh, oxytocin. Oxytocin is actually the love chemical. No oxytocin signals nitric oxide. Nitric oxide signals another chemical called endothelial derived relaxing factor. What does that do? Causes the vessels in your heart to swell. Wow. You will literally have energy in your heart. You will literally feel like your heart is full. Now, now once you have that feeling, you're not going to want to trade that feeling for anyone no. or anything. You're going to say, why would I judge that person? If I judge that person, I'm going to lose this feeling. Now, all of a sudden, you're self-regulating. Now, once the heart mm. is activated, I just was at the research lab this week. <laughs> once the heart is activated, it acts as an amplifier, and it <clears throat> a a amplifies energy in the brain. So once you start opening that heart, and it begins to signal the brain, you're going to suppress the survival centers. In fact, the research shows it will reset your baseline. In other words, if you're anxious and vigilant, and you learn how to self-regulate, you'll actually reset the baseline and you'll say, well, the trauma was 15 years ago. I saw my, uh, somebody get murdered or whatever. And then we'll say, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the moment, the heart, not the brain, it's the heart that actually resets the amygdala. And all of a sudden, the person all of a sudden switches down and all of a sudden, like, I, don't, I just don't have anxiety. We have mm. thousands of brain scans with anxiety and depression from people from all walks of life. They've reset. And all of a sudden, they don't have that anxiety. They don't have to take medications or do anything else. They know how to self-regulate. Where does all anxiety stem from? Hmm. Anxiety is doing this. Living in the survival. When you're living in survival, I'll tell you this. When the survival gene is activated, out of the infinite potentials in the quantum field, you'll always choose the worst case scenario. Why? Because if you're in survival and you're preparing for the worst, there's always better chances of surviving if anything less happens. So people are always selecting the worst thing in their mind and they begin to emotionally embrace that future oh before gosh. it happens. Thought and emotion, you start conditioning. So you're conditioning the body to become the mind of fear. You keep doing that enough times, once the body becomes the mind, it's a subconscious program. The person has a panic attack. Try as you may to control it with your conscious mind. You can't. You programmed it subconsciously. Now you worry about the next panic attack. And now as you start worrying about the next panic attack, it's the vigilance that creates the next one. Wow. Now here's what's happening in our work. People who are self-regulating and creating these elevated states, we have, we have heart scans of them sustaining heart coherence for a whole hour during a meditation. Then at the end of the day, they're still wearing the, the monitor. It's eight o'clock at night, they're not even in a meditation, and for a whole entire hour, they're in heart coherence. We say to the woman, uh, what's going on here? She said, I, I have no idea. I was just getting ready for bed, and all of a sudden, my heart just swelled up. It was so intense, I had to lay on my back and surrender to love wow. instead of surrendering to fear. She had a spontaneous love attack instead of a spontaneous panic attack. Now, wow. I would call that the natural state of being. So then, 
if you're living by those elevated states and you know how to feel that emotion of your future before it happens, you're less likely to wait for it to happen because you'll feel like it already happened. You're less likely to try to control it. You'll know that the moment you lose the feeling, you just disconnect it and you're gonna make your way back. And when you get good at it, no person, no thing, no experience can take it away from you. Wow. Now you're empowered. And if you understand the laws of how creation happens, then you're less likely to compete and rush to get what you want. You're gonna know that it's gonna to come to you. And now that's the new model of how we create. Knowing it's gonna to come to us at the right time, what if we want it faster? Well, you just do it again. Hmm. But remember, if you're trying to make it happen faster, you're back to the old self. Right. The new self would never do that. The new self would con constantly stay there. And so then how does it appear? It appears in a way that you can't expect. Because if you can predict it, it's the known. It's gonna come in a way that you haven't thought of, an unknown. And it's, and it's gotta rock your world. It's gotta catch mm. you off guard. It's gotta leave you n no doubt that what you've been doing inside of you that produces some effect outside of you. And when you correlate what you've been doing inside of you with the effect that produ you produced outside of you, you're gonna pay attention to what you did and do it again. And the energy of the joy that you feel when it happens, mm. you're gonna use that energy to create again. Now, people say to me, well, I'm this way because of that person and that thing. I would say to them, so you mean then that person or that experience out there is controlling your thoughts and feelings? Right. <gasps> that means you're a victim to your environment. But when you start changing your thoughts and feelings and it starts to produce an effect in your environment, you're gonna change the belief that you're a victim consciously or subconsciously of your life to becoming more of a creator of your life. Mm. And now all of a sudden when you become more a creator of your life, you can't blame anybody. You can't say, well that person or that thing, you'd have to say, I gotta be greater than that environmental right. condition. Who in history can I study that had the same challenges now what, what, was, what, what did they do? Let me just work that into my rehearsal so that I can improve, right? Just like you've right. done with sports. It's the right. same process. Yeah. What's more powerful than our thoughts or our, our emotions? And do our emotions change our thoughts or do our thoughts change our emotions? Yeah, the answer is yes. The answer is both. I mean, um, thoughts... Uh, to me produce an electrical charge in the quantum field and feelings produce a magnetic charge in the quantum field. Mm. Thoughts, wait, thoughts produce a what? An electrical charge Okay. and feelings produce a magnetic charge and how you think and how you feel broadcast an electromagnetic signature that influences every single atom in your life. The thought sends the signal out, now think about this, and the feeling draws the event back. So you mm. could have the intent that you want wealth, you want health, you want success. That's your intent, that's your thought. But if you're waiting for the experience to happen, to feel it, then you're not drawing the experience to you because you're not feeling the emotion, right? So then teaching people once again how to balance their thoughts and feelings because you can, you can enter that cycle either place. Sometimes we do a meditation, we start opening our heart, we start elevating the body's energy, and then those emotions can drive certain thoughts of your future. Mm -hmm. Other times, you open your awareness, you create brain coherence, you have the vision of your future, you begin to emotionally experience it. However you wanna jump on that cycle, uh, and then sustain it, because the longer you're conscious of that energy, the more you're drawing your future to you. So then, most people spend their lives, right? They we live in this realm called space-time, three-dimensional reality, and you move your body through space in three-dimensional reality, it takes time. Yeah. So everything, all your goals, all your dreams, all your visions, you're gonna have to get your body up and drag it through space every day to pay off that, you know, that home that's in your future, right? Right. When you create from the field instead of from matter, when there's a vibrational match between your energy and some potential, and your thoughts and feelings are coherent, now you are going to begin to collapse time and space or the experience is gonna be drawn to you. Now, now you're the vortex to your destiny and now you don't have to go anywhere to get it because you're not playing by the rules of three-dimensional reality, you're playing by the rules of energy and the quantum. Mm. So teaching people how to do this and getting better at it, then all of a sudden they're not forcing and controlling outcomes, in fact they're trusting and surrendering to outcomes because they don't want to get in the way because the moment you start trying to predict when it's going to happen 
or how it's going to happen, you're overlaying a known over a place where there should be an unknown, right? So teaching people how to do that means we have to lay down the very thing we used our whole life to get what we want for something greater to mm -hmm. occur, mm -hmm. right? And so that transcendental moment is something that we're working on demystifying. And, and you could be a gluten-free person, you could be a gluten-full person. You could drink wine, not drink wine. Right. You could be rich, you could be poor, you could be any color, any shape, any size. In fact, you can't tell me you're too old to do this work. You can't tell me that. We got elders in this work that we, we show you their brain scans and you'd be blown away. They, they, they know how to do it. You can't tell me you're too sick to do this work. We got people that have reversed stage four cancer numerous times. And, and yeah, it took a Herculean effort to do it, but they love themselves for it. You can't tell me that you're too out of shape or too overweight or too underweight. You can't, I've seen it all shapes and sizes. You can't even tell me that you had a brutal past. And people that have had very, very dismal mm -hmm. pasts that are free, that are happy people. You can't even tell me you're, you never meditated before. In fact, our research shows that many people have never meditated before have the most profound experiences because they're not trying to make anything happen. Yeah. They're just following the instructions, yeah. right? And, and they don't have a habit of doing it. So, so we don't want to exclude anybody in the process. We want to include everybody. So it turns out that our events tend to draw a, a good portion of men because of mm. the science. Mm. Uh, we have a lot of children now, that are, you know, teenagers that are coming and people in their 20s. We have a great community of elders. We have, uh, you know, in our events sometimes 63 different cultures wow. coming to, uh, to countries coming to our events of between 50 and, you know, 65. So, so we, want to, we want to make it so inclusive that community becomes the side effect because yeah. because with a community of like-minded like like en similar energy of, of people uh everybody understands they get one another you yeah. know you you communities tends to be the thing now that w in terms of our uh, social media and, and uh, the feedback we're getting everybody wants more community because you get a you get a thousand people in the audience and their energy synchronized. Now you're talking about something so much bigger. We're just going to measure this. I just talked to a researcher yesterday. We're going to measure a thousand people when they reach that synchronized moment when they're we can we know that the entire social coherence in the room is orderly. Then if you're producing a ambient coherent magnetic field in your heart and you're tuning into a thought or an intent and you got to thousand people doing that and your energy is going to start interfering mm -hmm. and co-mingling with the persons next to you. When that energy starts to synchronize, it's going to produce a bigger wave. Mm. The higher the amplitude, the higher the wave, the more energy there is. So now you have one mind and one heart. And now when it comes to healing others, and we've done the research on this now, and we're collecting the data that we're teaching people how to administer a change in energy in the person that's laying there. Because it's not matter that emits a field, that's the wrong way to think about it. It's the field that creates matter. You change the field, you change matter. You're not, mm -hmm. It's not your job to change the tumor. The right. tumor's the illusion. It's the pattern in the field that's, that, that has to be changed. So once people start reversing this, then you start seeing tumors disappearing. You start seeing blind people seeing, deaf people hearing. You start seeing people with Parkinson's disease switch on. I mean, you start seeing Stage four cancer is reversing because now they're, you're, you're, you're swimming upstream. You're going to the headwaters and making that change. So pushing the envelope and then seeing that in a community, when a community synchronized towards the second half of a week-long event, I mean, as I said before we started the show, I, I'm more surprised than, than anybody when we witness some <laughs> of these things. It's crazy. What is the... We talked about, I heard you say consciousness a couple of times. What's the difference between mindset and consciousness? To me, consciousness is awareness. Awareness is paying attention and noticing. And so 95% of who we are by the time we're 35 years old is a set of unconscious uh -huh. automatic programs that we've just practiced so many times that we're not consciously thinking about those. So in order for you to change, to answer the initial question that you asked, the first step is you got to become conscious of your unconscious thoughts. And you got to, you got to start looking at those hardwired thoughts that, that you think every day that are just circuits that have been fired and wired together. 
How do we do that? Should we t write a list at the end of the day or what are the most common thoughts we had that day? Like how does someone become aware of You don't thoughts? have to do that. You just have to sit down, close your eyes and not move. And then you'll get, you'll, you'll start seeing. What am I thinking about right now? Yeah, yeah. and all you want to do is observe the thought uh -huh. because <laughs> when you begin to observe that thought, you're no longer the program now. You're the consciousness uh -huh. observing the program and you're starting to pull out of the thinking program. Of the, thinking about the thinking. Yeah, who's doing the thinking of the thinking mm -hmm. about the thinking? That's who you are <laughs> when you're not the program. Right. That's awareness, right? Yeah, yeah. You gotta become aware of how you speak, how you act, become so conscious, so aware of it that you won't go unconscious and let that thought or that behavior run you. You gotta say, oh my God, this feeling that I've been living by for the last 20 years is actually guilt. I didn't know it was guilt because it just feels like me. And all of a sudden, as you start becoming conscious of it, you're beginning to objectify your subjective self. You're, you're pulling out of those programs and nobody likes to do that because it's uncomfortable. They'd rather turn on their cell phone, start texting, get on the internet, uh, you know, watch TV to distract them from that mm -hmm. moment. And that is what they have to move through in order to get to their, to, to their own personal freedom. So the first step is becoming conscious and m meditation means to become familiar with to become conscious of to to become so conscious of your unconscious self that you won't go unconscious to any thought any right. behavior or emotion and get ready because it takes a tr tremendous amount of energy to do that and awareness to stay conscious, to stay conscious. Mm -hmm. and so we fall from grace yeah fine you got you got you're awake, you got another day, let's go again. How often do you fall? Oh my gosh, I mean, <laughs> how many times have I done it? Thousands, but I'm not yeah. gonna give up because the moments in which I do connect or the moments that I do have that transcendental experience, what matters the most after it, when I have that transcendental moment, I look back at all of those difficult meditations, those difficult days, and those are the ones you remember. You don't remember the good meditations. Mm -hmm. You remember the ones where you came up against yourself yeah. and you went a little further. And you said, I'm gonna go a little further, I'm gonna go a little further. Or you had a rough day and you just went in and you just, you, at the end of the day, you surrender and you have the classic, oh my God, moment. There's no linear correlation. It's just whether you're willing to live in creation instead of living in survival. And so um, you get better at it. You know, we just get better at it. And, and for me, um, staying conscious and staying aware and staying present is an art because mm -hmm. you, you know when someone's present with you in your life because they're paying attention to you. You know when they're not present with you because they're not paying attention to you. So imagine this field of information, this, this, this intelligence that lives within you and I that's governing everything material in this world. It's a self-organizing intelligence you have access to it, so you better get present with it mm -hmm. as well as you can get present with anything else. And just because you can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Right. It, that, that, that realm you can't experience with your senses. You can only experience with your awareness. So then people have to take their attention off their bodies and go from a somebody to a nobody. Mm. Take their attention off the people in their life and go from that they identify with and go from a someone to a no one take their attention off the things in their life, their cell phone, their computer, their car, and go from something to nothing. Take their attention off where they sleep, where they work, where they're sitting, and go from somewhere to nowhere. Mm. Take their attention off the predictable future and the familiar past and time, and go from some time to no time. And now if you're taking all of your attention off of everything material in this three-dimensional reality, now there's only one other thing that's left. That means you're in awareness, your consciousness. And now, that is the bridge, that is the door mm. to the quantum field, and you can't enter the quantum field as a somebody. So, wow. if someone has spent their whole life working on having the perfect body, or so much so they have so much attention on their pain, where you place your attention is where you place your energy, it's going to take some work for them to take all of their attention off their body, right? Because they'll go, they'll do it, and then they'll go back, let's see if the pain's still there. Yeah. Oh, the pain's still there. So. It's a little bit of a waltz in the beginning, but as people start applying this, you start getting better at it. As an example, we had Bond University, uh, 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 university in Australia on the, on the Gold Coast. Uh, senior researcher took the large majority of my brain scans, and they had, she had them analyzed by her graduate students, and they, they statistically looked at everything. One of the most startling things for the research team was our community's ability to go to to get to that point where they're nobody, no one, no really? thing, nowhere, no time. And I'm talking four seconds. 
I'm talking five seconds, I'm talking nine seconds. Just like, just give me a second, I know how to do this. I feel like we've brainwashed ourselves over the years to believe a story of the past is who we are and who we will always be in the future. So how do we brainwash ourselves in times of stress and anxiety in order to become more peaceful, loving, and successful in the future? How do we brainwash ourselves in a different way? Sure. Well, um, that's what uh, I have spent just about my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, wow, I mean, the first and most important thing is that you have to understand that if 95% of who you are is a set of unconscious programs, mm. then the first step is lighting a match in a dark place. If you want to become someone else, you got to become aware of who you are. Yes. <laughs> that means you got to start thinking about what you've been thinking about. You got to start paying attention to how you speak. You got to be being, conscious. Being conscious to every thought, action, emotion, uh, word, emotion, yeah. feeling, expression, body language, everything exactly. yeah. you need to be aware of and conscious of. Self is there, aware. Is there, is there a way that you help people to track this besides just like, okay, I'm aware of this in the moment. Do they journal the, their thoughts throughout the day or when a negative thought comes up, do they remember the way their body language is throughout the day, closed off and guarded or open? Do they, how, how do they self-reflect where they can track it better? Mm. Well, that's a big question. But I, I will tell you this, that you demystify the word meditation and the word meditation literally means become familiar with. Yeah. When you become so familiar with your thoughts, so aware of your emotions, so conscious of your habits that you wouldn't go unconscious to, to them again, now you're no longer the program, right? Mm -hmm. so, so getting people disentangled from that program, we found out is a formula. And when we teach people how to do certain things with their focus and opening their awareness, when we teach them how to create a very disorderly brain that has been driven by the hormones of stress into a more orderly, coherent brain, and teach them how to open their focus and practice that, they'll come up against those thoughts and they'll become so familiar with them. Listen to this. They won't believe them anymore when they come up any longer. Wow. And so when they hear them in their day, they'll be like, that's not gonna stop me from my future. So if they're sitting there and they wanna quit, just because they're sitting still, and they're not quitting, then they're developing a will that's greater than those programs. And you're breaking out of the shell and you keep doing that. You're going to get up and do the work every day because you did it yesterday and you're going to want to do more of that because you're getting out of your past and it feels better. And if you keep doing that and you keep feeling better every day, the question is, why wouldn't you do it every day? Because you would ultimately just feel better. And then yeah. the more whole you feel, means the more you are connected to your future. Imagine if you felt every single day, and this is what I do work on. If I could stay connected to the emotions of my future all day long, there's no way I would be looking for when it would be happening. How could I look for when it would be happening if I feel like it's happening? I wouldn't look anymore, which means I wouldn't be separate from it. And that's when you start creating the magic, right? That's when you're in that zone. And that's when that reaffirms that personality that you're becoming. And now, you don't, you know, wake up in the morning and go, oh God, I got to create my future. No, you're, you're, you're going to jump out of bed because Excited. you're not going to want that magic to end. That's the right. key. So, so you teach people how to do this and they start seeing the events in their life. Uh, they're not going to want to miss a day in, in really just getting beyond their personality. And listen, it's so cool because it's amazing. You see all these people come in for success and new careers and uh, new relationships and healing from a disease and mystical experience. They come in for all these different kinds of reasons, healing from a childhood trauma. But really, they just want wholeness. Right. And so as they start becoming more whole and they start feeling more whole, it's not coming from anywhere out there. It's not coming from out there. Nothing out there is making them feel whole. If, when the novelty of the the thing wears off, you feel empty again. They're feeling whole from within. Oh, this is different. This is a different game. So why wouldn't you want to keep feeling more whole that you no longer want anything? Now, now you're not, you're now you're not living in separation any longer. That's the cool part. If someone is so disconnected to their future, their greater future self, if they're so uh, it, negative thoughts, suicidal thoughts often, uh, hurting themselves potentially often, uh, just 
don't have many close friends, don't feel like they identify with themselves in the world, don't feel like anyone understands them, no one accepts them, no one gets them. Like, this all sounds great in theory, but when you're in a place of survival mode and your thoughts constantly, how can someone like that without having to go through the workshop that doesn't have the opportunity to go right now, what can they start to do to just give someone a little bit of relief and peace in their heart? Yeah, it's simple. Knowledge, experience, wisdom. Philosophy, initiate that philosophy, master mm -hmm. it. Yep. Mind, body, soul, thinking, doing, being. Learning it with your head, applying it with your hands, knowing it by heart. And this is the journey of knowledge because when you learn that information and you really study it, you are going to begin to see the world differently because yeah. your brain is changing. Then when you start saying, how can I use this? How can I apply it? How can I personalize it? How could I do something, initiate this information? What do I got to do? How do I get my behaviors to match my intentions? Now, this is the act of trial and error. It's so important. You don't make it the first time. You don't give up. You get up and you try to walk again. And you start learning how to do this. And so as you begin to do it over and over again, you start having new experiences. Yes. Well, new experiences <clears throat> enrich the circuits in your brain philosophically. And now the brain makes a chemical. And now you're feeling more unlimited. You're feeling more whole. You're teaching your body chemically to understand what your mind intellectually understood. And now you are literally, literally starting to embody that knowledge. Yeah. It's becoming, <clears throat> it's signaling new Jesus, it's new information, but but you can't do it one day and expect your wealth to come. You got to do it over and over again. Yes. So the repetition of re practicing over and over again, neurochemically conditions the mind and body to begin to work as one. You've done it so many times. The body now knows how, how to do it subconsciously. Subconscious. Just, mind. Like it, just like it knew how to subconsciously lean into trauma and victim mode right. for decades. Now the body's getting new information. It's going to adapt. And, and now <laughs> you're going to literally become that knowledge, you're gonna become it. That's what you're gonna become. And so now that's when you no longer have to try. It's who you are. It's, yes. yeah, you've memorized an internal order that's greater than anything in your outer world that's gonna tell you something else. That's and key you, right there. And you become immunity to negative thoughts or negative viruses, where if something tries to, someone tries to say something to you, your body just rejects it automatically, just as if your physical body would reject uh, some virus coming in. Is that correct? It's absolutely the if way So I works. said, Dr. Joe, you can't do it. You're stupid. You're ugly. You're not smart enough. You're not this. You wouldn't even, they wouldn't even, it would just bounce right off you. You wouldn't even receive it because your field is so powerful. It's pushing all that away. No, because it's not the truth. There you go. You it's just laugh. It'd just be like, not, okay, that's just not real. But if I kept telling you, you know, you need this product, you need this drug, to feel better, to look better, to be better. Let's appeal to your lack. And if you buy this, it'll make that feeling go away. And you try it for a while, then the feeling doesn't go away anymore. You got to try something else. Mm -hmm. And now watch the news and listen to all that information that's telling you you're limited. You're, you know, you're limited. It's something out there that's going to get you. There's nothing wrong with that, this. But if you're constantly saying it's traffic, it's the news, it's politics, it's my ex, uh, that's making me feel and think this way, then you're subconsciously, not consciously, affected by your environment and you'll be mm -hmm. more affected by your environment. It's not a conscious yeah. process. But the more you say, I am going to, in spite of the fear that we talked about or the anxiety or the frustration or the aggression or the hostility or whatever it is, the pain, the suffering, instead of saying that I can't change that, you know what, I'm gonna think, I'm gonna see if I can. Where can I find that information? Where, and, and all of a sudden you find people that are doing it and it makes sense to you. And you're like, well, okay, I'm feeling really anxious. Uh, instead of taking uh, something that's going to chemically change me, let's see if I could chemically change me mm. without something out there. Let me see if I can make my own pharmacy of antidepressants. Let, I don't know. Let's see if I can make my own pain relievers. Let's see if I can make my own chemicals that cause uh, my immune system to get stronger. I'm just curious. Let's see. Uh, now, now the person is, they're out of the bleachers and they're on the field. So they'll start believing that they can do it, even if they change it a little bit. And, and if they don't get it the first three days, but they've seen the testimony of someone who has, and you see that person who's totally happy that was abused every day of her life and they don't have the genetic disorder any longer, you're going to say, wow, that person doesn't look like a movie star. That person doesn't look mm -hmm. like... Uh, they're vegetarian now. That person doesn't look young and buff <laughs> or whatever it is. They're going to look like a normal person. And you're going to say, 
I identify with her. I Ident identify with she can do it. Mm. I can do it. Now here's the cool part. Yeah. We've seen then when people do this with the same stand on the stage and tell the story that the, that the person in the audience with the same genetic condition does it in a shorter amount of time because the four minute mile is broken. Yeah, yeah it's evidence. So now evidence becomes the loudest voice. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it's in testimony. There's, a, there's truth right in front of you. It's, 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 it's right in front of you. There's, you know, we had a guy in Dubai that had, he was in a wheelchair with this, with this tumor in his spine and the doctor sent him home to die. He came across my book like a week before they got Which him. book? Uh, Becoming Supernatural. Mm -hmm. and, and then he read the book and he, he somehow got in there. Someone gave him a spot. He was in a wheelchair, uh, stage four cancer, go home and die, severe uh, paralysis, a limitation, um, crowding the spinal cord, the whole bit. Um, nothing we can do for you. All these pain meds, uh, excruciating pain. <laughs> One week after the week long, his tumor reduced by 30%. I mm. just saw him in, in Munich. He's, he can walk. He's walking without his wheelchair. Wow. I mean, I mean he's, he's, in a, he's in a new experience. He, he's believing now in himself. And when you believe in yourself, you believe in possibility. You can't have one without the other. How do you believe in yourself when you've never believed in yourself and you've got doubt inside of you all day long? Knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. Keep learning, keep studying, keep listening to it. Sooner or later, that'll become a louder voice in your head than I can. It's too hard. I'll never change. Yeah. And you it mean just, knowledge, of, knowledge of new philosophies, knowledge of new skills, knowledge of new study, anything? Study, study. If you, if you don't want to read, get on YouTube and watch yeah, of people course. talk about how you can change your genes. Just start looking, start looking at the testimonies on websites. I mean, we have over 450 testimonies now, people yeah. that have healed themselves. It's not small it's potatoes. That's yeah, amazing. Start looking to see what did that person do? And when they tell their story and it's worse than yours, you're gonna start going, wow, that person really had a tough one. And if they overcame it, well, geez, why am I, well, I could just forgive my father right now. I can forgive yeah. my ex right now. I want to let them go and I want to be free. <laughs> and I don't want to, I don't want to give them my attention because I give them my energy. I want to I'll put my attention in my future. In Sooner future. or later, you're going to come to it the way you do. But if you don't have the knowledge, then you believe in it less. See, yeah. see, there's people that we, I saw this just recently and I was looking uh, closely and there are people that do this work, do, do this transformation work uh, in the meditations that we teach. And they're so impatient and they're so entitled uh, and they want an instantaneous change from the lack and pain <laughs> they're feeling, right? That they never overcome themselves in their meditation. They never mm -hmm. overcome themselves in the meditation. And when they finish their meditation, they believe in this work less. Mm. Then there are people who say, I can tell you the moment I made up my mind to change because I had reached the end and I made a decision. And that decision to change carried an amplitude of energy that was greater than the hardwired programs in my brain and the emotional conditioning in my body. And my body literally responded to my mind in that moment, that the choice that I made became a moment in time I would never forget. And they'll tell you, and that's the moment I remembered when I was gonna change. Now, those people then, when they sit down to do the work, they're, they're the chemotherapy hasn't worked. Uh, the injections didn't work. Uh, the radiation didn't work. Uh, the surgery didn't work. The diet didn't work. The yoga didn't work. This is, this is now their end. They have nothing else to believe in but themselves. Mm. And they go all in, not 50%, not 60%. They're going all in. They have nothing else to believe in. Now, listen. When they go a little bit outside the known, they, got, they went a little further than where they normally would stop. They pushed themselves to that next limit. They started believing in themselves that they could do it a little bit more. They, they finish the meditation and they get up and believing it's, it's, it's working more than working less. They, they're, they're the person that's believing in themselves. Mm -hmm. That's why, mm -hmm. because it's not the work, it's your belief in yourself, right? It's, and then when you believe in yourself, you believe in possibilities. When you believe in possibilities, you gotta believe in yourself. Who else are you gonna believe in? So people make these great strides in, in the, and, the, and their own personal growth is a testament to the living organism. The living organism, the species of human beings that's starting to believe, well, maybe we're not so as li limited as we've been programmed to believe. Maybe we are more unlimited. And, and I'd rather throw in with that. And, and, if, and if you don't think you, your, your immune system isn't aware of viruses that could, that could handle any virus if it got the right signal and, and if it was in a state of wholeness and 
your thymus was activated and your blood flow to that center was turned on because you decided to turn it on and, and you decided to release those chemicals that suppress the survival centers in your brain because oxytocin does, and you wanted to stay there for a period of time and memorize that feeling, I guarantee you that thymosin would begin to signal those T cells and those T cells would activate their T cell receptors and those T cell receptors would be releasing immunoglobulins and, and, and antibodies that would block those receptors coming off a virus like you, you may not pass. I'm sorry. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you're looking for more greatness in your life, then check out this next video right here. All the stories that I'd followed in life were people who went from nothing to something. And here was a guy who had something, but had traded it to have nothing, but looked like the happiest person I'd ever met.